Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys a couple ways you can set up controls for a camera to move around in your scene during gameplay for a Unity game. So if I was to hit play, we'd have the scene playing, and we'd want to be able to move the camera through some method such as WASD on the keyboard, similar to how we would move a character. So I have some scripts written that I can easily bring into my project for situations like this, such as camera pan input. I'll show the code in a minute, but these are also available on Patreon if you want to go ahead and download them all. So I'm going to import my camera pan import script into the project, and I'm going to attach it to my camera object. Now, you'll see I have it called pan camera, but aside from adding a pixel perfect camera to the camera, simply because this is a pixel art game, it's essentially the same as the default main camera in your scene. So let's go ahead and add a camera pan import into here. If you have a prefab and you want to reuse this camera object, we can also click over here, added component, apply to prefab pan camera. So this version of the camera script has a pan speed, and it also has the name of the input controls, which we're using to control the camera. So you can customize this with your own value rather than using the default horizontal and vertical controls. So right now, if I hit play, it's going to look something like this. You'll notice that there's a little bit of an acceleration when you start pressing on the keys before it reaches its full speed. Uh, this is because of using import.get access rather than get access raw. So it accelerates to the full direction of up, down, left, right, or some kind of diagonal direction. Okay, so let's take a look at how this script actually works. I'll go ahead and edit it. Uh, feel free to copy from the screen if you want. So of course, we have the fields that we exposed to the inspector. We've already talked about that. I also get the camera component inside of here. Not 100% necessary because the thing we're actually moving is the transform. But with this, we can directly find the transform that is specifically associated with the camera component. So if you're wondering what that is, that's this transform component in the same game object that the camera component is inside of. If you happened to use nested game objects, then this would be helpful in knowing that you're specifically talking about the camera's transform and not a uh, child game object. So as for controlling the camera's direction, it's really simple here. Uh, you do import.get access. So there's two versions of get access. There's get access and then there's get access raw. If you do get access raw like this, then as you can see here, it would have no smoothing applied to the access input. And as soon as you press W, it's going to move in that W up direction immediately. So if you want there to be smoothing, you should use get access instead of get access raw. And you'll see that we need to do that twice, once for the horizontal and once for the vertical. And we're using that as the parameters for a new vector. So a vector two has an X component, that's left, right, horizontal, and Y for up, down, vertical. So we take the import vector, and we use that as the direction for moving the transform. So one way of moving a game object, like a camera, but it could also be used for other things as well, is transform.translate. So you move the transform in the direction and distance of the translation. So our direction is right here, import vector. Our speed is right here with the pan speed times delta time. So we adjust for how long it's been since the last frame as we update our camera. And that's really it. So something important here to note about transform.translate, you should really only use this with a game object that isn't going to be dealing with any kind of physics. Uh, basically a game object that doesn't have a rigid body because if you use dynamic mode rigid bodies and then you translate uh, the transform directly rather than adjusting, let's say, the velocity of the rigid body, uh, then it's going to kind of circumvent the physics system and that wouldn't be good. But for a camera, since this isn't going to be colliding with anything. It's not a physics object. Transform.translate works pretty well here. So that gives us the obvious result of uh, when we hit play, we're able to pan in the directions. So it's reading the axis import from horizontal and vertical. If you're wondering where those settings are, you can go up to edit project settings and then go to import manager and you can see the default horizontal and vertical axis here. You can see it's matching it by the name of the axis. So that's something you can customize. And if you did want to use horizontal and vertical, the defaults for, let's say, controlling your character, but you wanted separate controls for camera, then you could take one of these other uh, axis fields that are unused and you could rename it to something like camera horizontal and then give it a different key to press. So let's say J for the negative button, L for the positive button. And then let's also do uh, fire two, rename that to be camera vertical. So for the negative button, I'll do K for down and 
I for up. Okay, so we have those access control input. So now we have these two different controls. So let's go ahead and take that over to here and do camera horizontal and camera vertical. If we hit play, now WASD will no longer work, but we can do I, K, J, and L for camera controls. So now you'd be able to control the camera separately from the player of your game. Now, so far, we've just used the default Unity input package. If we go back to project settings, uh, you may see up here at the top that they actually recommend you use the new input system package instead. So that's already on version 1.5. It's been in Unity for quite a while. And, and it would give you a similar but yet more customizable and different way of controlling the input for your characters or your camera, whatever you need to control on your screen. So let's go ahead and actually remove the camera input here. So let's go ahead and remove the camera input component here. I'll apply this to the prefab. So this is the patron page I have set up for uh, the C sharp scripts, miscellaneous scripts that I'm uh, providing for my tutorials. And this is also where I'm going to be uh, adding new scripts as I release more tutorials so that I don't have a million posts on the patron, uh, but just kind of everything's in one. And you'll see down here that there's also a input system version. So right now there's only one script that requires import system, but uh, this is going to be camera pan on navigate. So if you want to use the new import system for doing this, these kind of camera controls, then this is actually the one you want. So let's go back to my desktop and I have that same file over here, Unity collection input system. So I'm going to double click that and I'm going to import this import system specific script camera pan on navigate. Okay. And you'll see that we get an error right away. This is why I separated them into separate packages. So when you get a message that mentions import system does not exist, import value does not exist. Those are messages that are referring to the import system package. So if you want to add import system to your unity project, we would simply go up to window package manager. Search the Unity registry up here on the top left. So Unity registry, and then in the search bar, put in import system. So currently on version 1.5, we want to install that to our project. And you'll have to restart the editor real quick. So when the editor reboots, the error messages should go away. So let's click on our pan camera object, and I'm going to add a component. Let's search for camera and we'll find camera pan on navigate here. So the inspector is going to look a little bit different here. By default, use import system is checked, which means we're using the new import system to handle the controls for the camera. But we can also uncheck this and revert back to the defaults of controlling through access name. So if I hit play, then once again, WASD is going to work for the horizontal vertical default import system axes. But if I have use import system checked and I hit play, it's not going to do anything right now. And that's because we need a new component on our camera. So I'm going to add a component and we want player input. So this is something that comes out of input system. We are going to need a import action asset. You can either create your own custom one or you should be able to select here and choose the default import actions. So your import actions are going to have two sets of controls, one for the player and one for the UI. I consider the camera to be more of a UI thing in this case. So I use the UI default map and we're going to be responding to uh, send messages on navigate. So whenever you have user input that matches one of these function names, the player input is going to send to your camera script or really any model behavior script on this game object, a message which is going to tell it to run each of these functions if those functions exist inside of our script. So camera pan on navigate obviously as on navigate. So we use the controls for on navigate to make the script a response to it. So if you want to see what those controls are, you can double click on the input action and you'll get this window to pop up. So we're looking for action maps UI navigate. And then you can see that there's a bunch of different control options you have for having the navigate action actually occur. So for keyboard here, we have WSAD. So the navigate UI is controlled by default through WSAD. You can also see up, down, left, right arrows on the keyboard also work for the same setup. So uh, that's what we're going to be using to have on navigate trigger. So with this player input and then the Boolean use input system checked, we should be able to hit play. And once again, we can control through WASD and also up, down, left, right arrows on the keyboard. So how does that actually work? Let's uh, jump into the script once again. 
And if you'd rather not type out all the scripts, they're available on the Patreon page. So the pan speed, the access names for the classic input, we already know about that. A new one here is lerp rate per second. So I changed the script up a little bit. If you want to be able to gradually increase the speed towards uh, the direction that you have the input in, then using a lerp function is one way to do that. Uh, so let's jump into the script and talk about some of the changes here. If you'd rather not type it out yourself, once again, they're available on the Patreon in the link below. Uh, so we have the use import system Boolean. Of course, that's just a toggle, whether you're using the new system or the old system. Keep in mind, this script will only compile if you have import system installed. Hence why there's still the uh, backup version that we talked about earlier. And then we have lerp rate per second. So when we want to move in a direction, if we have this set to a lower value, then this will help control how fast we want to adjust our movement towards the current input direction. So basically an acceleration towards the current direction. So if we press up, how fast do we want it to be going full speed in the up direction? And then the pan speed, of course, is just a multiplier on whatever the direction is in terms of how fast we're going to move. So if we come down here, um, it's not too complicated, but one new function you'll notice down here is private void on navigate, which is going to receive as a parameter input value value. So when you're making scripts that respond to the new input system and you're using send messages as the method, then you need to have your model behavior class methods match the signature uh, that you would see in the player input. So on navigate is one of them. We looked at the on navigate action. So this is the function that will receive the data from that action. So we receive that as an input value. And from the input value, we can get the type of data we're looking for. In this case, it's a vector two. We're looking for horizontal and vertical axes import. So for navigate, that comes as one thing. The vector two already includes the X, which is the horizontal, and the Y, which is the vertical. So whenever we receive that data, I update the input direction here. That's a vector two. And you can see in the update function, the fallback, where just like before, we would get the input axes. Now this time I'm doing it using get axis raw because here I just want to get the direction, but for controlling how fast we move towards that direction, that's where we have these functions down here. So of course, on each update, we're still translating by an adjusted direction. That's our X, Y input, whether we're getting it through the old system or the new system. We multiply that by a pan speed to control how fast we go. And then delta time just makes it so that we move the appropriate amount, depending on how long it's been since the last frame. So the mathf lerp function for getting our final direction input, in a sense, I'm calling it the adjusted direction here. You can see if you hover over it, mathf.lerp linear interpolates between A and B. So the T parameter, you can think of that as a percent change between the starting value of A and the end value of B. If T is 1.0, then that would mean that you would change A's value 100% towards whatever the value B is. And because these are floats, you have to do X and Y individually. So that's why we call it twice. So we have the starting value of the adjusted direction which is going to be basically whatever on the last frame our adjusted direction was. And we're going to move it towards the current input direction. That's the flat up, down, left, right, 1.0 value in whatever direction you're talking about, left, right, up, down. And the amount we adjust it by is the lerp rate per second times time delta time. So in a nutshell, this is the amount we change the value by represented as a float. So 1.0 is 100% and zero is obviously no change at all. And it's going to return this value adjusted by this percent change towards this value. So the faster our lerp rate per second, then the faster it's going to um, move towards the full speed of the input direction. So that was probably a little confusing. It'll be easier if I just hit play and we take a look here. So with the default value of 10, you can see that it doesn't immediately go to whatever direction we're looking to. If I let go of the keyboard, you can see it takes a second for it to interpolate towards no speed or a zero zero direction multiplied by our pan speed. So it's not instant. Uh, if I change it to zero, of course, we're going to hit play and there'll be no movement speed at all because we're not adjusting towards the import directions at all. So you shouldn't set it to zero. If we set it to something insane like 10,000, 
then whatever the time delta time changes this to, it's going to be above 1. So it's just going to be 100% every time I press the key. So WASD, you can see there's no acceleration. It's either moving or it's not. And then there would be like the in-between value. So if I set this to something like 2, hit play, you'll see that the acceleration towards whatever the direction is is quite slow. So, so that includes the acceleration and the deceleration. So if I let go, it takes a while for it to stop. So just by playing around with the lerp value, you can get the camera to act quite differently. So it's uh, pretty easy to kind of control how much smoothing you want in the camera. So that in a nutshell is pretty much how you can control your camera through keys on your keyboard during actual gameplay inside of Unity. If you want to take this camera and reuse it across all your scenes, one thing I would recommend is that you just create um, some kind of camera prefab. So you can take your existing camera, drag it in here, and then just add that to any scene that you want a panable camera in. Make sure that if you applied the script and the player import outside of the prefab, which you'll notice that's this little plus here, that you actually apply it to the prefab too. So I'm going to click here, added component, apply to prefab, click here, added component, apply to prefab. And now anytime I want the same settings, I can just drag it into the scene, click on the camera, and you'll see it has the same lerp values, the same input actions, and so on and so forth. And once again, even if you're using this camera pan on Navigate, if you want to revert it to the default script, you can just basically uncheck here, use import system, and then we'll use the classic horizontal axis name and vertical names like the earlier simpler script does. If you like this kind of format where I just basically show a script and how to use it and roughly what the inner workings of it are, uh, let me know with a comment and a like on the video. Once again, these scripts and a bunch more are available on the Patreon. Thanks for watching to the end, and I will see all of you in my future video content.